Well, welcome everybody. So glad to see you today. Welcome everybody on social media. Uh, it's just so good to be here in the in the house of God, and and I trust I have a message today that the Lord uh, 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 has given me to share with you. So, with that being said, let's go to Jeremiah the fourteenth chapter. Jeremiah the fourteenth chapter and the fourteenth verse. I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation. And the Bible says this, Then the Lord said, These prophets are telling lies in my name. I did not send them or tell them to speak. I did not give them any messages. They prophesy of visions and revelations they have never seen or heard. They speak foolishness made up in their own lying hearts. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ himself told us to beware of false prophets. And the apostle Peter said that there would be, he said there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you. Now, if you are not aware, many influential so-called prophets and prophetesses and a prophetess is just a female prophet. But many influential so-called prophets and prophetesses have prophesied over television and other media outlets that Donald Trump would win the 2020 election and that he would serve two consecutive terms. People have asked me about these false prophecies. Today, I want to address this issue for the specific purpose of helping anyone listening who has been disoriented by such false prophecies. Before I specifically address the recent false political prophecies, let me give you a brief biblical foundation about prophets and prophecy. First of all, what is a prophet? Well, a prophet is a holy man or woman of God who is inspired by God and speaks on his behalf. That's what a, a prophet is. What is a prophecy? Well, a prophecy is a written passage or spoken utterance made by a human being which is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Actually, that's how we got our Bible. If you look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21, the Bible says, For prophecy never came by the will of man, notice that, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And that's how we got our Bible. The Holy Spirit came on many different men over many different, different you know, uh, periods of time. And they, they wrote or spoke as the Spirit of God moved them. And that's how we got our, that's how we got our Holy Bible, is through prophecy inspired, uh, you know, utterance or the, you know, the, the men of God were inspired as they wrote, you know, the prophets of the Old Testament and New Testament. Now, many think, now listen carefully, many think that all a prophet does is predict the future. But predicting the future is only one of the things a prophet may or may not do. Not all Prophets are seers. A seer is one that would predict the future. Not all prophets are seers. Jesus said, listen to this. Jesus said that John the Baptist is the greatest prophet ever to be born of a woman. And John never predicted the future one time. John pointed people to Jesus, which is something all true prophets will do. The most important function of a prophet like that of all Christians, is pointing people to Jesus. After that, the most important function of a prophet would be teaching the Bible. And again, many people wrongly think that all a prophet does is predict the future. Now, uh, let me share with you two main purposes of prophecy. Two main purposes of prophecy. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3, notice what the Bible says. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. 
So you see, a lot of times people think, well, prophecy, predicting the future. Well, there is there there are times where prophets predict the future. All right, we'll talk about that as we go. But look at at, at one of the main purposes of prophecy is to is to bring edification, exhortation, and comfort to people, that, to build people up, to encourage them and exhort them and, and, and edify them, to build them up. That's what, that's what prophecy is supposed to do. And then in Revelation 19 and verse 10, a second purpose of prophecy, Revelation 19 and verse 10, the last part of that verse says, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So when prophecies are being given, if they're from the Lord, They'll be, they'll be drawing attention to Jesus. Not to the prophet who's giving the prophecy, but they'll be drawing attention. True prophecies from the Lord will be lifting up Jesus and drawing attention to him. The testimony, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So prophecy ought to build people up, edify them, exhort them, comfort them, and draw attention to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, the Old Testament has many prophets. Some wrote books of the Old Testament and some did not. Uh, some are well known like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Jonah. You know, they had, had books. They wrote books, you know. And then you, you have like uh, Elijah and Elisha. You know, they were prophets. Uh, they, they didn't write books, uh, but they were prophets nonetheless. You know, Samuel was a prophet. Um, and, and we could list many, many uh, Old Testament prophets. You know, Moses was the greatest prophet of the Old Testament. And he set forth as an example for all prophets. He displayed every aspect of a true prophet, both in his call, his work, his faithfulness, his accuracy, and most importantly, his humility. One of the uh, 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 main characteristics of a true prophet of God is humility, is humility. And frankly, the, the, the ability and willingness to admit that they were wrong. Remember that. Moses's prophetic voice spoke to Israel of the past, the present and the future. See, a lot of times people, like I said, just think prophets are talking about the future all the time. But, but uh, the prophets of the Old Testament, many of them not, not only dealt with the future, all right, but they dealt with the here and the now, and they also dealt with the past, some of them. Moses' prophetic voice spoke to Israel of past, present, and future, as would every major true prophet after him. This pattern, or much of it, is found in the case of every true prophet prophet. Again, prophets aren't just always prophesying or foretelling future events. Now, there are also New Testament prophets. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 says, And he himself, Jesus, the Lord, gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. These are what are known as the five-fold ministry gifts that God has given to the body of Christ. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Notice there's prophets in, uh, are listed there. There are New Testament prophets. There really are for real New Testament prophets. But notice verse 12. What are they given for? For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now think about that. Now I don't see prediction listed anywhere in there. Now prophets do predict the future at times, but but that wouldn't necessarily be a main function of, of a prophet. It's these other things we've talked about, and and notice there it is is again for for the edifying of the body of of Christ, for the, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. That's what prophets need to be doing: equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. And for the edifying or the building up of the body of Christ. That, there, there you have it again, that edification, building up of the body of Christ. See, when, when true prophets of God are ministering under the Spirit of God, it is not going to disperse confusion throughout the body of Christ. It will, it will, it will uh, produce edification and clarity. True prophets of God will bring clarity to the body of Christ, not dismay 
pandemonium and confusion. You need to understand that. A true pro now again, there, the prophets do at times predict the future. Obviously, that's clear. But I, I'm just going through this with you to, to, to let you know there's other things that true prophets do. You understand that? And there's no prophet that's, that is all they do is predict the future. That's that. No, absolutely not. Prophets have a whole bunch of other things that they do beside predicting the future. And as I said, some prophets don't even predict the future at all, like John the Baptist. But again, when a true prophet is operating under the, by the Spirit of God, there will, it will bring edification to the body of Christ, not mass confusion. You need to understand that. Now, the Apostle Paul was also a prophet. God used him to write most of the New Testament. He was also a prophet. But, but he spent most of his time pointing people to Jesus and preaching the word of God. However, Paul made several predictive prophecies. Many of which uh, that have yet to be fulfilled. Just like many of the Old Testament prophets made predictive prophecies which have yet to be fulfilled. They will be as we move on out in time. Actually, the book of Revelation from chapter 4 on is a predictive prophecy given by the Apostle John, who was also a prophet. And, uh, and, and uh, all of that, Revelation chapter 4 on, is, uh, is a predictive prophecy yet to be fulfilled. Now, as you study the Bible, as you study the Bible, a prophet must not contradict the written word of God or speak from their own mind or heart. See, they speak from the heart of God. If they speak from their own mind or their own heart, they're a false prophet. What a, uh, what a prophet declared had to come true or he was considered to be a false prophet. That's pretty easy. If they're prophesying and what they're prophesying isn't ever coming true, they're a false prophet. One must, all, listen to this, one must also realize, oh, listen to this, listen carefully. One must also realize that a false prophet could give accurate prophecies, yet their motive could be wrong. And that wrong motive would make them a false prophet even with accurate prophecies on their resume. I think of Balaam. Hey, let me say this. Just because a prophet gives some accurate prophecies, they could still be a false prophet. The Bible's clear on that. I think of Balaam. You know, Balaam, he was a man in the Bible. He's called a prophet, and he's also called a soothsayer. And as, as I've studied into him... It's interesting, he gave one of the most accurate prophecies about Jesus that's in the Bible. But yet for money, Balaam told an evil king how to lead God's people astray and defeat them. It's interesting, as you study in the Balaam, a lot of people want to know, what, was he a prophet or was he a, or was he a, 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 a diviner? A, a, how do I want to say it? A, like a magician. An evil magician. Which was he? Was he a prophet or was he a, 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 an evil magician? Well, as I've studied into it, uh, I, it's, it's interesting. Balaam, there were times that he, the, because the Bible calls him a prophet and the Bible calls him a soothsayer. And, and here's the thing. There were times, you need to know this. There were times that Balaam would yield to the Holy Spirit and he'd give an accurate prophecy. There were other times where, where he would yield to, to evil spirits and do evil things and, and over in the area of witchcraft and, and divination and that sort of thing. You know, it's possible for, a, for a, a prophet, a minister, to yield to the Holy Spirit at one time and yield to occult powers at other times. Now, the first time I heard uh, Brother Hagen, who's perhaps the foremost prophet of our day. I'll say something else about him here in a moment. First time when I was a much younger minister that I heard him say that, I kind of balked at it. How could a prophet or a minister yield to the Holy Spirit 
at one time and then yield to the to demonic power at another. But, you know, in my years of ministry, as I've watched it, I've, I've watched that happen. And that's what Balaam did. Now, Balaam had a problem with money. He would he would uh, uh, he, he would let money cloud his prophetic perspective. And he took money. See, he remember, he's that guy who said that uh, that, that God has blessed the, uh, his people and whom God has blessed. No man could curse. And King Balak tried to get him to curse the people of God and he couldn't curse the people of God. Remember that? But for money, he took money and he showed King Balak how to get the people of God to get into sin so that they could be defeated. Now, that's terrible. Isn't that terrible? It's terrible. He had a wrong motive. Listen, when you study into prophets, motive is all important. And Balaam had bad motives, wrong motives. So what I think about him is that he was a prophet of God. He did have that calling on his life. And he did at times yield to the Holy Spirit and give some accurate prophecies. But he also had, had a, a, a something in his personality, and particularly as it had to do with money and the greed for money, that he would yield himself to demonic power and do demonic things. So you need to realize just because a prophet gives an accurate prophecy doesn't mean they're a true prophet. They could be a false prophet. You need to understand that. Just because somebody comes up and gives a list of some accurate prophecies they've given and they say, well, that makes that makes me a true prophet. Well, remember Balaam. Remember Balaam. Also, be careful about people that are always reading their prophecies to you that they gave that came to pass. See, see, humility is so important. Prop, true prophets of God won't draw attention to themselves. They'll draw attention to Jesus. You need to understand that. Remember that. But anyway, you need to realize, and I want to say it again, that just because a prophet might give an accurate prophecy doesn't mean they're really a true prophet of God. Balaam is a perfect example of that, as I've said. Now, it must be noted that there are conditional prophecies. There are conditional prophecies. Uh, perhaps the two best examples are Jonah and Isaiah. Jonah prophesied about Nineveh and he said, yet 40 days and Nineveh will be overthrown. But it did not happen. Well, that didn't make Jonah a false prophet. What that was, was a conditional prophecy. Nineveh was not overthrown because the, the prophecy was conditional and Nineveh repented. And then God relented on the, on the judgment he was going to bring. But you need to realize there are conditional prophecies. And, and, and a prophecy can be given and it can be given by the Spirit of God. But if it's conditional and those conditions are, are you know, whatever, aren't met or whatever the case, like in this case, uh, Nineveh repented, so the, they weren't destroyed. That didn't make Jonah a false prophet. It just meant that that prophecy was conditional. Like Isaiah, he went in and told Hezekiah, set your house in order. You're going to you're going to you're going to die. Remember that. But then remember what Hezekiah did. He repented before God and, and before Isaiah made it back out across the court, courtyard, he came. The Lord spoke to him again, said, go back in, tell him I'm going to give him 15 more years. Well, somebody could come in there and say, well, Isaiah is a false prophet because he said he said Hezekiah was going to die and, and, and he didn't. Well, it was it was a conditional prophecy and, and Isaiah, I'm sorry, Hezekiah repented. And so then there was a, there was a change in what God did. So you need to realize that when when prophecies are going out, sometimes they're conditional. And if they're and, and, and if they don't, if they don't come to pass. If they don't come to pass, it, it doesn't mean the person that gave it was a false prophet. It just could well mean that that condition or conditions weren't met. OK, and so you need to realize that that sometimes there are uh, conditional prophecies that are given. Now, that being said, now, now listen to this. That being said, one must realize there's a difference between Isaiah and. Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Peter, Paul, John, or other Bible prophets writing the Holy Scripture under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and someone today giving out a prophecy. Would you agree with me on that? There is a great difference between Isaiah or Ezekiel or Jeremiah or any of the Old Testament prophets or New Testament prophets. There's a difference between the Holy Spirit coming on them all those years ago and them writing the Bible than somebody giving out a prophecy today. Those people 
Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Peter, Paul, James, those people are in a, they would sit in a different class than somebody getting up on television or, or, or me standing here giving out a prophecy. They would be in a, in a different class than that. That's easy to see, isn't it? We don't put prophecies that are given out today on the same level with the Bible. You understand that? Uh, and, and frankly, any prophecies that would come out by a human being, you know, would need to line up with the Bible. If they contradicted the Bible, then that prophecy that person gave wouldn't wouldn't be accurate. You can see that, can't you? And uh, and, and that being said, uh, you need to realize that prophecies must be judged. Look at First Corinthians fourteen twenty nine. First Corinthians fourteen twenty nine. Prophecies must be judged. Now, notice this. The Bible says, let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. Well, this is a this is a monumental statement right here, because what this tells us is that a prophet could give a prophecy and it could be inaccurate. Doesn't mean that they're a false prophet. It just means they're human and they made a mistake. You understand that? See, it's all about intent of the heart. If you have a prophecy, uh, if you have a prophet that stands up with ill intent, like Balaam, and trying to lead God's people astray, that's a whole different thing than, than a prophet just making a mistake. See, a lot of people think that prophets are infallible. Well, the Holy Spirit is infallible, but the Holy Spirit flows through a human vessel and a human vessel can miss it. And, and, and that's why prophecies need to be judged. You need to understand that. Just because so-and-so prophet prophesies doesn't mean that it's by the Spirit of God. It might be, it might not be. Right here, the Bible says, let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. Prophecies need to be judged because they could be right, they could be wrong. Look at 1 Thessalonians 5.19. 1 Thessalonians 5.19. Notice the Bible says, do not quench the Spirit. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. And then notice this, it says, do not despise prophecies. Now, I've really had to lean on this verse lately because of all these political prophecies that have been going on in recent, in recent days and months and the last year and before. It gets to a point where you can start despising even listening to them. But here's what the Bible says. Don't quench the spirit. Don't despise prophecies. Look at verse 21. Test all things. See, there it is again. Prophecies have to be tested. And then notice the Bible says, hold fast to what is good. So there's good prophecies that are in line with, with the word of God and by the spirit of God. Hold on to those. But if there's, if there's bad prophecies going out, the Bible says, don't hold on to those. You understand that? So, so you see, we need to realize prophecies must be judged and, and we, we need to test them and hold fast to that which is of the Lord and that which is good and that which isn't. And then we throw it out. Don't pay any attention to it. Listen to this. I think this is an interesting statement. Mistakes in prophecy do not make everyone who's mistaken a false prophet any more than mistakes in teaching make everyone who's mistaken a false teacher. I've been teaching for years now, and guess what? I've made some honest mistakes in teaching over all these many, many years, 30 plus years now. I'm human. I've made some mistakes. I've misstated some things. I, I've, you know, over the years, maybe my position on, 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 on a certain Bible subject, maybe, maybe I realized that I was wrong on a certain thing and I've, I've had to correct it. But notice here's the dividing line. See, my intent was never to come up and mislead or cause confusion. And just because maybe I mistaught something over the years doesn't mean I'm a false teacher. It just means I'm human and made a mistake. Same thing's true with a prophecy. If a prophecy, if somebody gives a prophet a, a prophecy, a prophet gives a prophecy, and it, it and, and it's you know they just make a mistake and miss it, you know we don't need to go burn them at the stake. You understand? They just made a mistake. Here's the dividing line, though. Here here's the dividing line. Listen to this: When a mistake is made, will the prophet or the teacher be humble and repent? 
That's the thing you need to underline in your notes. There's times over the years I've come up in the pulpit and I said, hey, I missed it on a certain area. Let me make the correction. I apologize. See, you understand that the dividing line here is when a mistake is made, whether it's in teaching or if a prophecy is given that, that, you know, that, that, that turned out not to be right. Will that prophet or will that teacher stand up and say, hey, I missed it. I made a mistake. I heard Brother Hagin, the foremost prophet of our day, in my opinion, he said many times when he'd give a prophecy or share something, he'd say, look, I'm human. I can make a mistake. You know, he said, I can miss it. I can miss it. See, I'll follow somebody like that. I'm not going to follow somebody that said, I'm the prophet. And I gave the prophecy and and that's just the way it is. And, hey, but but it didn't come to pass. Does, hey, I'm not wrong. I gave the prophecy. You say, I'm not going to follow anybody like that. You understand that? They're not from they're not sent by the spirit of God. So someone might ask, how would one judge or test a prophecy? Well, it's, look at this. A predictive prophecy is pretty easy. Those are the easiest to judge. Wait and see if it happens. Is that pretty simple? You know what a predictive prophecy is? Something that predicts the future. Those are real easy to test. Just wait and see if it happens. Is that easy enough? That's not, that's not rocket science there, is it? But a non-predictive prophecy, something that wouldn't necessarily predict the future, uh, how do you judge that? Well, that's real easy too. First of all, does it line up with the Bible? If it does, good. If it doesn't, immediately throw it out. But here's something else. You know, someone would say, well, well, you know, uh, uh, I heard this prophecy and uh, it, 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 I couldn't say it didn't line up with the Bible, but, but because, you know, like, like, frankly, a political prophecy, like who's going to win an election? You can't go into the Bible and find out if that lines up with the Bible or not. So you know what you have to do? God gave every Christian this wonderful thing. It's called the unction of the Holy Spirit. It's that inward witness at peace versus no peace as I teach it. And, and, and if you hear a prophecy and on the inside you're going, Ugh, I tell you what, you better be cautious of that prophecy. Do you understand that? Now, let me tell you this. The real purpose of predictive prophecies. Now, listen to this. The real purpose of predictive prophecies is to make people aware of a future event, to get them ready for that event and help them stand through that event. That's what a, a real predictive prophecy given by the Holy Spirit is, is meant for. To uh, make people aware that something's coming, to get them ready for that. And to help them stand through that. Now, in the, in, in, the, in the New Testament, Agabus, he was a prophet. Few people have heard of him. But in the book of Acts, Agabus was a New Testament prophet. He gave two predictive prophecies. Let's go to Acts 11. Let's go there. Acts 11. And notice here, Acts 11, verse 27. During this time, some prophets traveled from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them named Agabus, stood up in one of the meetings and predicted by the Spirit that a great famine was coming. See, that's a predictive prophecy. He's, he prophesied a great famine was coming upon the entire Roman world. This is New Living Translation. Acts 11, uh, uh, 28. He predicted by the Spirit that a great famine was coming upon the entire Roman world. Now watch this. This was fulfilled during the reign of Claudius. So it was a predictive prophecy. It came true. It came to pass. See, let's wait and see if it happens. Well, it did. All right. You can check history out. It happened. But notice this. Now watch verse 29. So the believers in Antioch decided to send relief to the brothers and sisters in Judea, everyone giving as much as they could. Now, see, here's what happened. This prophet gave a predictive prophecy. And what was the purpose of it? To get people ready for the coming famine. And notice what happened. The believers took action and they sent relief. It wasn't to make Agabus look like a great prophet. It was to help people. It was to get people ready for something. Do you see that? 
And as a result, they were prepared, they were forewarned, they were forearmed, and they were able to send relief and get relief there before, before the worst of the, the, you know, the, the famine hit and, and caused lots of problems. You see, if predictive prophecies by the Spirit of God are to get people ready, you see. You know, I know right here in this church, not to draw any attention to myself, but right here in this church, back in, in 2007, the Spirit of God gave me a prophecy concerning the financial collapse of 2008. I sat in a chair right there on that platform and gave that by the Spirit of God with, with some other things he gave me. And it happened just like the Spirit of God said. He said, he said financial calamity's coming. Financial calamity is coming. There'll be calamity in a financial arena. And within a year's time, there it was, that collapse, that financial collapse of 2008. Remember that? And then as it pertains to this coronavirus, remember the Spirit of God spoke to us about a giant arising in the land. Remember that? And, and that's back before anybody knew, knew what coronavirus even was. And, and the Spirit of God said it's arising in the land. This is back well over, well, oh, several, oh, I guess several Months before it ever even people even knew what it was. And, and, and the Spirit of God said right right in here. I gave this prophecy. I'm not directing attention at myself. I gave this prophecy. Said it's arising even at this time. And it was here and nobody really even knew it was here and it here and spreading, you see, in, in the United States. See, the Spirit of God to get us ready. Back last September, the Spirit of God uh, uh, had me prophesy that you'll, you'll see things in, in, in the upcoming months and so forth that you've never seen in the United States. Now, now we saw that on, on January the 6th, didn't we? I never thought I'd see a man with, with horns and a, and a bear outfit on sitting in the head seat in the Senate, did you? About 10 minutes after the Vice President was sitting in that chair. Did you ever think you'd see anything like that in the Capitol? Absolutely not. Now, the Holy Ghost didn't give that to me specifically, but, but, but he said, you'd see that you're going to see things in this nation that you hadn't seen before. That was last September. And, it, and it, it came to pass and it's coming to pass. You see, why did he do that? To get us ready, see, to get us ready. Now, the Apostle Paul also, he gave a, uh, per, uh, uh, Agabus rather, this prophet Agabus gave a personal prophecy to the Apostle Paul. The Spirit of God had told Paul to go to Jerusalem. And Paul was headed that way, and the Spirit of God had been testifying in every city that bonds and afflictions were waiting for him at Jerusalem. And when he ran across Agabus, Agabus uh, uh, took Paul's uh, clothes or whatever and bound his hands and whatnot. And he said, thus saith the Spirit of God, this is what's going to happen to the man that owns this when he gets to Jerusalem. Put it in my own words. And sure enough, when Paul got to Jerusalem, it, it happened just like that prophet had prophesied. Now, it's interesting when, when it comes to personal prophecies, see, we're not supposed to be led by personal prophecies. We're not supposed to be led by a prophet. See, in the Old Testament, they didn't have the Holy Ghost like we have, so they were led by true prophets of God in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we're not to be led by prophets or prophetesses. We're supposed to be led by the Holy Spirit. But, you know, a, a prophet or some minister could prophesy and give a, a personal prophecy like Agabus did to Paul. But see, it already lined up with and, and bore, bore witness with what Paul already had in his spirit. It wasn't to lead Paul. He was being led by the Holy Spirit. But that prophecy that was given him was something that was confirmation to something that was already in his heart. See, if somebody prophesies something to you and, and, and if it doesn't line up with the word, throw it out immediately. But if, it, if it's not something in your heart, then what you need to do at least is put it on the shelf and just let time go by and see, see you know, see, you understand what I'm saying? But you don't ever do anything just because a, a so-called prophet tells you, prophesies to you to do it. Amen. If you don't have peace with it, it needs to be a confirmation, you know, you understand that? And, uh, and if it's not a confirmation, then you put the thing on the shelf and just, just let time go by and see if it comes to pass or not. Look at 1 Corinthians, uh, I'm sorry, 1 Timothy 1.18 along these same lines. 1 Timothy 1.18. Um, Paul writes to his son in the faith, Timothy, and he says, This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage a good warfare. By them. See, apparently prophecies, not apparently, we know for sure, but prophecies had been given to this young man, Timothy. And he had, as time went by, he got into some situations where he needed to remember those prophecies that were, was given to him so that he can, could endure what he was going through, you see. 
Now, I know in this church right here, over the last 20, 25 plus years, I've given a handful of personal prophecies out to people at the direction of the Holy Spirit. And they were predictive in nature. And, uh, and, and I tell people, I say, you know, if it don't mean anything to you, throw it out. And, or at least put it on the shelf and see. And, uh, and, and, and time and again, uh, uh, some uh, astounding testimonies where, where, where the Spirit of God, and I'm, I'm not saying this to draw attention to myself, I'm just telling you what happened. And, uh, and, 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 and uh, we've given some things out, and, and, and as time went on, uh, it, what it was, it was to get that person ready for a, a something that was going to come up in their life that they, 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 would, that they, they needed that prophecy, that word from the Lord to hang on to to get them through. And, 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 you know, I think a situation where I'd share the word of God with somebody, the prophet, a prophecy with somebody. And, 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 and then as weeks and months went on, they'd say, oh, my gosh, what you shared with me. Oh, my gosh. It, it's I've even had him call me on the phone and say, oh, my gosh, pastor, that word that you gave me. Here it is. This this event, this thing has come up in my life. Here it is. And, oh, thank God, because you see that word got me ready for this. And then it helped me stand through this traumatic event. And then it helped me come out on the other side victorious. Can you say amen? See, that's how the spirit of God operates, not to draw attention to myself, but to help people, you see. And that's happened several times. Now, let me tell you this. Brother Kenneth E. Hagin, I've already referred to him a couple of times. He's in heaven now. He was a New Testament prophet. And I followed his ministry for almost four decades. And I found him to be a true prophet, a stable prophet of God. And in his book, he wrote a book. He wrote many of them, but Seven Steps for Judging Prophecy. Okay. I'm going to read a quote to you from his book. This is uh, Seven Steps for Judging Prophecy, page nine. Okay, it's right here. I've got it highlighted. Okay, now I'm going to read this. Listen to this. Here's what he said. It's certain that genuine prophecies from God are not going to be used to predict who is going to win a horse race or a political race. We need to judge and rightly divide such so-called prophecy. I'm going to read that again. Brother Hagen. Here's what he said. It's certain that genuine prophecies from God are not going to be used to predict who is going to win a horse race or a political race. I'm going to read that again just because that microphone did that to me. It's certain that genuine prophecies from God are not going to be used to predict who is going to win a horse race or a political race. We need to judge and rightly divide such so-called prophecy. What did Brother Hagen just say? He said that every political prophecy that you have heard has not been by the Spirit of God. Now, I read this to help you. And because I find it interesting that many of the, influen the influential so-called prophets who have made numerous false political prophecies view him, view Brother Hagin, as one of their fathers in the faith. Many of these political prophecies that you've heard, the people given them, they'll call Brother Hagin their father in the faith. Well, it doesn't look like they read his book. Or if they did, they skipped page nine. Let me now address, that's powerful, isn't it, what Brother Hagin? That just debunks the whole thing right there, doesn't it? Let me now address the current false political prophecies in the last part of this message. There have been more prophecies than perhaps can be counted that Donald Trump would be reelected for a second consecutive term as president. We now know they were all false prophecies. I've listened to many of these political prophecies, but there is one very large influential Christian television network that perhaps is the most outrageous on this subject, especially with some of the guests they have on almost nightly from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. On this TV network, where they magnify the title of prophet. They seemingly all want to be prophets. 
They're not, they don't want to be pastors, teachers, doorkeepers in the house of God. Their motive is to be accoladed as a prophet. You always need to be watchful right there. When people are introducing one another as prophet so-and-so, prophet so-and-so, calling one another prophet all the time, that's that right there, turn the channel off. But on this TV network, they've been prophesying all along that Donald Trump would win the 2020 election. And this network has a vast reach. That's why I'm calling attention to it. It has vast reach, affects millions of, of Christians and other people. The founder of this network, now I thought he was a prophet, and I still want to give him the benefit of that doubt. But he said, I heard him say, he said Mickey Mouse would be king before Joe Biden would be president. And it's not that just a mistaken prophecy was made. It's that they are continuing in their false prophesying about the 2020 presidential election. They are doubling, tripling, and quadrupling down on their errors. On their errors. After Trump lost, I was hoping they would apologize for their false prophecies, but they have not. I did hear one prophet, not on this network. In fact, I don't even know who this guy is, but I saw one guy on, on, uh, on a social media. He's apparently got a large church out in California. And, and I don't know who he is, but I heard him and he came on there and he said, I've been given prophecies about Trump being reelected. And he said, I missed it. He said, I gave these publicly. I'm going to apologize publicly. You know, I have respect for a man like that. And I would consider him... A prophet. But on this television network, no such apologies. They're doubling down, tripling down. When Donald Trump lost the election, because they'd been prophesying all along he was going to win, and we know now from Brother Hagan that all those prophecies weren't even by the Spirit of God to start with. When Donald Trump lost the election, this is not about Donald Trump. This is about prophesying now. This is, a, this, you understand? When Donald Trump lost the election, they prophesied Trump would win in a recount, which did not happen. They prophesied that the court system, including the Supreme Court, would step in and give him the win, which did not happen. They prophesied that on January 6th, the Electoral College vote would be overturned, which did not happen. They prophesied that on January 20th, Trump would be sworn in for a second term, which did not happen. So far, they're batting zero. And by the way, some of these same so-called prophets on this TV network prophesied that COVID-19 would be gone by Easter, which did not happen. Then they prophesied it'd be gone by summer, which did not happen. Then they prophesied it would fall in the fall and be gone in the fall. It did not happen. They're still batting zero. One of these so-called prophets on there appears on this network almost every evening. He gives a prophecy, a dream, or some words supposedly from God almost every broadcast. Listen, dear friends, you know, he gives more prophecies than there are chapters in the Bible almost. Listen, God does not operate that way. I said, God doesn't, be careful if somebody's always got a word, they've always got a prophecy. God showed me this, God showed me that. And they're saying that regularly. I'll tell you right now, they're not sent from the spirit of God. By the, they're not sent from the presence of God. They're not operating by the spirit of God. Yet they go on that network and goof up lots of people. He, this, this same man, he prophesies that the 46th president does not exist. I've heard him. He prophesies vague things like the wind will blow hard and the news will report it. And then they show a news report where, the, where they had a windstorm. Well, you know, anybody can do that. I can, I can stand here without the anointing of God on me and I can make a prophecy that, you know, they're going to have a windstorm down in the Gulf of Mexico and some houses are going to get blown over. And I guarantee it to you, eventually that'll come to pass. 
It doesn't take the Spirit of God to say something like that. I remember the guy I worked for growing up at the golf course, the golf pro. I was a young boy, you know, teenage boy. I was talking to him uh, uh, one day about prophesying. Prophecies, and he said to me, he said, I'll give you, now he, does, he doesn't know anything about the Bible or nothing like that. He's a good man, though. He said, I'll give you a prophecy. He said, I'll prophesy at the next Indy 500, there's going to be a car accident. And, 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 and that car is going to have, in the accident, it's probably going to have some blue, white, or red paint color on it. Well, you know, I mean, it doesn't take a genius to prophesy that. You know it's going to come to pass. Yet this prophecy gives these kind of, the wind is going to blow and it'll be reported on the news. I mean, you know, this would be funny if it wasn't so pathetic. When questioned about his false prophecies, he says they are not false. He says Trump did win. You know, sometimes people want to hear a certain thing so badly, they refuse to hear the truth of a situation. And will only listen to, to quote unquote prophets who will tell them what they want to hear. It's like Jeremiah. He said the people were going to be in captivity for 70 years. Other prophets, one particular said it's only going to be two years. Now, how many would rather listen to the guy saying you're going to be in captivity too and not 70? You know, but the real word of God was 70 years. But people didn't want to listen to Jeremiah. They wanted to listen to the person that was telling them what they wanted to hear. And you know what? Jeremiah finally wrote the captives there. And he said this. He said, he said, pray to the Lord for Babylon. Because the people of God had been taken into Babylonian captivity. Finally, Jeremiah, the true prophet of God, he said, pray to the Lord for Babylon. For its, for its welfare will determine your welfare. Now, I know a lot of people are heartbroken that Joe Biden got elected president. I, I'm, I'm against basically everything the Democrats stand for. But we still need to pray for him, just like we prayed for Donald Trump, just like we prayed for Barack Obama, just like we prayed for George W. Bush and all the way back, so that we might be able to lead a quiet and peaceable life. Now let me go on with this. This so-called prophet on this TV network proclaims on TV that all the prophets... We're prophesying that Donald Trump would win and all the prophets could not be wrong. You know, it's interesting. Uh, King Ahab of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah were going to join forces to retake Ramoth Gilead. Listen to this. All 400 of Ahab's prophets prophesied victory for King Ahab in the battle. Jehoshaphat, who was a godly king, did not feel right about these prophecies. See, he had that inner witness. And he wanted a second opinion. So uh, a little known prophet named Micaiah was summoned. And listen what happened. This is in 1 Kings 22. Just listen to this. The messenger who went to get Micaiah said to him, listen what he said. He said, look, all the prophets are prophesying victory for the king. Be sure that you agree with them and promise success. Think about how diabolical that is little known prophet see so this guy says on television all the prophets couldn't be wrong all the prophets couldn't be wrong but yet Ahab all of his 400 prophets were wrong and they went they got they, they went and got Micaiah and this messenger says to Micaiah he says look all the prophets are prophesying victory for the king be sure that you agree with them and and prophesy success but Micaiah replied as surely as the Lord lives I will say only what the Lord tells me. Now, I, now I want to follow somebody like Micaiah. How about you? I'm going to follow him, not all these 400 others that are just telling the king what, what he wants him to hear. So, uh, uh, telling the king what the king wants to hear. So, Micaiah prophesied defeat and the death of, listen to this, Micaiah prophesied defeat and the death of Ahab, which happened exactly as Micaiah said. All of these 400 prophets who falsely prophesied victory for Ahab, perhaps, listen, perhaps they wanted to appear on the victory television network of their day. Enough said. All of these 400 prophets who falsely prophesied victory for Ahab merely said what the king wanted to hear and then collected their offering from the royal treasury. And they got to stay in the group of prophets. 
You need to realize if any one of them would say anything contrary to what Ahab wanted to hear and what those other 400 prophets were saying, they were going to get kicked out of the club. If a prophet wants to appear on this large TV network they, that I'm talking about, they have to prophesy in line with the other prophets on there and in line with the founder or they're not going to be able to be on that television show. Now, this past Thursday evening on this TV network, things got really bizarre. A so-called prophetess, and I'm teaching this not to be critical. I'm doing my job as a pastor to protect people from error. And a lot of times people get mad at me because a few times over the years I've had to preach messages like this. And people think I'm not walking in love, but they're wrong. I, I'm doing just the opposite. I'm doing what love would do. And sometimes you just have to be, you know, I try to deal in vagities enough where I don't call names and I'm not going to call names. But sometimes you just got to point it out for people and be a little more specific because folks don't know a lot of times and they'll sit there and they'll watch this stuff. And it just it just throws them for a loop and they and they get all confused. So I'm trying to be a little more specific to help people from going off in error. So if you're mad at me, that's between you and the Lord. I'm doing this because I love you. Last Thursday evening on this TV network, things really got bizarre. It got so bizarre, my wife was in there watching with me. She had to get up and leave the room. She just, it was so bizarre. Listen to this. A so-called prophet, uh, prophetess came on there who had been on there before the inauguration on January 20 and prophesied that Biden would not be inaugurated. After Biden was inaugurated, I was hoping this last Thursday that she would apologize but she doubled down and prophesied by screaming into the camera for several minutes that Trump did win. And that in the next short period of time, she prophesied Biden will be removed from office and Trump will be installed as president. Pastor Terry, do you think that could happen? Well, folks, these people are batting zero. So I'm not thinking that they're going to hit one now. But you know what? If they did, you know what I'd do? I'd come back in this pulpit and I'd apologize to these people. But think of what she's prophesying. Thus saith the Lord. And then about that time, so she's prophesying that Biden is going to, in the next upcoming short time, that he's going to be removed and Trump's going to be reinstalled is what she's prophesying. And then at that point, this other male prophet I've been telling you about, so-called prophet, he chimes in and, 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 and he says it's going to be like Solomon and Adonijah. And remember, Adonijah tried to take the throne away from Solomon, who was God's choice. And they're prophesying that Trump is like Solomon and Biden is like Adonijah. And by the time they got done, according to them, Trump will be reinstated as president, most likely by March of this year. And they're just not going to stop with this foolishness. And sad to say, many Christians will still believe them. This so-called prophetess went on to prophesy that anyone who opposes what she is saying is on the wrong side, on the dark side, and that God is keeping a list of weak, faithless ministers who disagree with her Trump prophecies. Well, I guess I'd be on that list. It'd be a good list to be on. Somebody disagreed with her. This is a control tactic to manipulate good ministers of Jesus Christ. You need to realize this kind of nonsense is going on and being propagated on one of the largest Christian television networks that there is. Maybe not the largest one, but one of them. And at the end of the TV broadcast, they ate cake celebrating their quote unquote accurate prophecies. And I thought that took the cake. <laughs> and after watching that, I felt like I'd, I, after watching that, I felt like I had been in the outskirts of the darkest regions of the twilight zone. So, so far out, Rod, Rod Sterling couldn't help me. And what's, what's really sad, people will listen to me and say, oh, he's mean-spirited. He's up there mean-spirited. No, hey, grow up. I'm trying to help you. 
We need more voices in the land that'll say stuff like this and stop this foolishness. The sad thing for me personally is that I once had a good deal of respect for the founder of this network I'm talking about. But by allowing this on his network, he is complicit in the propagation of prophetic error. One might say, some of these prophets have been given accurate prophecies over the years, Pastor Terry. And I would even say the founder of the network has given some accurate prophecies over the years. But so did Balaam. We talked about him. Listen to this. Balaam gave accurate prophecies at times, but he also led God's people astray and the end was not good for him. Did you know financial gain clouded Balaam's prophetic focus? This network focuses on hyper-prosperity, and it's clear that their prophetic focus has been clouded. I've seen this with other prophetic ministries as well. I've watched them over the years. They're real accurate when they start out, and they seek God, and they're real accurate in their prophecy, and then they get their, they get their focus off the, the, the prophecy, and they get their focus over on money, and the pr prophetic focus becomes clouded. I've watched it again and again. And here's the real tragedy. One young man posted online that he'd been telling his family, none of who were believers, this is the tragedy. He'd been telling his family, none of who were believers, this young man, he said that Trump would ultimately be installed as president based on the words of these quote unquote prophets on this network. He thought it would glorify the Lord and bring his family to Jesus Christ when Trump was miraculously inaugurated. And now he says, I don't think I can ever talk to my family ever again about the Lord. Now that's what these people, and people get mad at me for preaching messages like this, calling this foolishness out. But you see, those people on that network, that's what that leads to. Leads to young, young people like this. And makes Christians, legitimate Christians, look like idiots to the world. You know, from my study, the old, my study of the Old Testament, there's two groups of false prophets. There was the one group that just, they, they gave some false prophecies and the Bible says you don't fear them. You don't, you don't pay attention to them. There's another group that tried to lead people, lead people astray and those were the ones that were to be put to death. Serious stuff. Now, I'm not saying that these people on this network, these so-called prophets ought to be put to death. I'm not saying that we're under the New Testament, we're under grace, not under law. So I'm not saying that. But I tell you what, these prophets, so-called prophets and prophetesses on this network and others that are doing this, are on, listen to me, they're, they are on dangerous ground with the Lord. This sort of thing, only in a different vein, not political prophecies, it cost William Branham, who was a legitimate prophet of yesteryear, it cost him his life. He got off into error and was negatively, negatively affecting vast numbers of people with his errant doctrine. And he was, people came to him and tried to, to, to point it out to him and, and get him back on the right track. He wouldn't listen. It cost him his life. These, these people on this network are in danger, dangerous territory. What does the Lord have to say to us as I begin to conclude here? I know I've gone on a little long, but it, 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 it's necessary. What does the Lord have to say about all these so-called prophets and prophetesses. Listen to this. Jeremiah 23. Just listen. This is what the Lord says to his people. Do not listen to these prophets when they prophesy to you, filling you with futile hopes. They are making up everything they say. Do not, they do not speak for the Lord. I have not sent these, these prophets, yet they run around claiming to speak for me. I have given them no message, yet they go on prophesying. If they had stood before me and listened to me, they would have spoken my words and they would have turned my people from their evil ways and deeds. See what the a real prophet in this nation right now will be prophesying national repentance. Yes. Not who's going to win the next election. I've heard these prophets, uh, listen to what the Lord says. I've heard these prophets say, listen to the dream I had from God last night. And then they proceed to tell lies in my name. How long will this go on? How long will this go on? If they are prophets, 
They are prophets of deceit, inventing every, everything they say. Therefore, says the Lord, I'm against these prophets who steal messages from each other and claim they are from me. I'm against these smooth-tongued prophets who say this prophecy is from the Lord. I'm against these false prophets. This is what the Lord's saying. They're, they're imagery, dreams, and flagrant lies that lead my people into sin. I did not send or appoint them, and they have no message at all for my people. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is Jeremiah 23. The thing we need to learn is this foolishness you see going on right now is nothing new. It's happened over all time. This kind of stuff. False prophets in the Old, false prophets in the New Testament. The one prophet on this station, I'm almost done. He says, he says, whenever he's questioned, he says, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. He says, leave us prophets alone. And that's what everyone needs to do. Leave them alone. Turn off the TV, turn off the computer, turn off the cell phone, stop sending them money. That'll do it. And I want to tell people to stop eating their poisonous stew. You know, uh, uh, Elisha, the prophet in the Old Testament, they had made a bunch of stew and some poison had got in it, you know. And, and, they, and, and they came to him and they said, they said, Elisha, there's death in the pot. He said, take some flour and put it in the pot and then you'll be able to eat it. Now, you know, it would take faith to eat, eat out of that pot after the prophet Elisha said, said, eat out of it. It's okay. Would you have been able to just go up there and eat out of it? I mean, you'd have to think about it. I mean, you'd have to want to be sure what Elisha was saying was right. You know, the Bible says, believe the prophets and you'll prosper. Look, if Elisha said the stew was okay to eat, I'd eat it. If Moses said the stew was okay to eat, I'd eat it. If, 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 if Jeremiah said the stew was okay to eat, I'd eat it. If Ezekiel said the stew was okay to eat, I'd eat it. If Daniel said the stew was okay to eat, I'd eat it. If Malachi said the stew was okay to eat, I'd eat it. If Samuel said the stew was okay to eat, I'd eat it. If Peter, Paul, James, John, if they said the stew was okay to eat, I'd eat it. If Brother Hagen said the stew was okay to eat, I'd eat it. But I tell you what, I'm not not going to eat the stew that any, that any of these so-called prophets I've seen on television. If they tell me it's okay to eat it, I'm not going to eat it. You know why? Because it's poisonous and it'll kill you. And we need to stop eating their poisonous stew. Can anybody say amen? amen. So I'll conclude by saying I do not judge them personally, but I do what the Bible tells me to do and what it tells you to do. Judge their prophecies. That's what I've been doing here. Not judging them, judging their prophecies. And I think you can see I've judged them to not be of the Lord. I'm doing my job as a pastor, warning God's people about error. I pray the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened and they would repent and be the men and women of God that he wants them to be. If they would repent and apologize, that would go a long way. And I'd have respect for them if they do that. And I want to tell you, separate God from man. Just because you see so-called prophets or prophetesses acting weird on t TV doesn't mean that God is weird. Just because you see false prophets doesn't mean that there's not the real. There's, the, there's fake ones, but there's also real ones. And remember that. And sad to say, I have no reason to think that they'll stop with their false prophecies. Therefore, I'll say this. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, let's not let them fool us twice or any more. Can you say amen? amen? Stand with me if you would. If you're out there and you're watching on social media, I... I just want to say this to you. If you've been listening to political prophecies, stop listening to them. They're not from God. Just stop listening to them. Turn it off. Don't pay no attention. But instead of being taken up with prophecies, political prophecies, start praying for political leaders. Yes. That's what you do. Pray for them. And so, so let, 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 let's be sure we spend time praying for this government that's in there now. Even though we, we, we may not agree with anything that they stand for. Let's do what the Bible says and pray for them. Let's don't just pray for the Republicans and not the Democrats. Let's pray for all of them equally. Why? So that we can lead a quiet and peaceable life. Okay? So if you don't know Jesus, hey, call out to him right now. The Bible says if you call on the name of the Lord, you'll be saved. So do that. You'll miss hell. You'll make heaven. He'll make your life worth living. So, hey, thanks for listening. I know it went a little bit long today, but I felt it was necessary. I hope it helped everyone. God bless you. Bye-bye.